This video is about how to make the most out of the user interface of puzzle-shakashaka.com. Part 1. General Overview The playing field consists of three main areas. The control buttons. From here you can control the zoom of the puzzle, the game settings, and you can undo or redo moves. The game timer is also located in this area. The action buttons. From here you can submit the puzzle solution for verification. Reset the puzzle. Print a copy. Share your progress. Or load a new puzzle. The puzzle area. This is the actual playing field where you will enjoy solving puzzles. Part 2. Control buttons. Adjusting the size of the puzzle is an important aspect of the game. Finding the perfect zoom level will help you focus easier. You can use the zoom button to show and hide the zoom slider. Sliding it to the right will enlarge the puzzle, sliding it to the left will make it smaller. You can reset the zoom level to its default position by clicking the 100% button. If you happen to zoom in too much or the puzzle is too big a scroll bar will appear on the bottom. The second button shows and hides the settings. I'll tell you everything about the settings in part 5. In this area you can also see the puzzle timer. You can compete with other players or with yourself if you are that type of a player. When you start playing a puzzle your progress is automatically saved on your device. This is in case you accidentally close the browser, the power goes off or you navigate away. Quite useful for larger daily, weekly and monthly puzzles as well. Have in mind that the timer keeps running so you may see ridiculous numbers if you come back after a day or two. If this bothers you you can simply start a new puzzle or hide the timer altogether from the settings. If you make a mistake or take a wrong path, then the undo and redo buttons are here to help. You can also use the standard keyboard shortcuts, Ctrl plus Z and Ctrl plus Y. Have in mind that if you reload the page or submit your solution for verification you will lose the ability to undo your moves. Part 3. Action Buttons once you are ready with solving the puzzle you can press the done button to verify your solution. You can also press the enter key on your keyboard to submit it. If you got it right, then the timer will stop and you will be offered a chance to submit your score to the Hall of Fame. If you messed it up completely, you can press the start over button, which will clear all the moves, letting you start from scratch. If you are more of a pen and paper type of a player, you can print the current puzzle using the print button. This will show you a printer-friendly preview. If you want to print a bigger puzzle and it doesn't fit the sheet you can zoom it out until it does. You can also use the Ctrl plus P keyboard shortcut. If you want to print more than one puzzle you can check out the mass print section in the main menu, where you can print multiple puzzles on the same page. If you are stuck, but you know someone who can help you, then you can use the Ask a Friend button. It will show you options to share your current progress to Facebook or Twitter. You will also be able to use the Permalink to send your progress to someone in an email, instant messenger or any other way. If you want, you can also use the link to the screenshot of your current state. If you want to load a new challenge you can use the New Puzzle button. Part 4 Puzzle area. Enough with the boring stuff. This is the fun area where you will actually solve the puzzles. I will show you how to play with the default settings. The standard method is to play with a mouse. I will show you how to play with the keyboard in part 6 and on a mobile device in part 7. By default a left mouse click places a triangle. Click in one of the four corners of the cell to set the orientation of the triangle. Click again to remove the triangle. Click with the right mouse button to place a dot. You can also hold the control key and click to place a dot. Part 5. Settings. Let's see what goodies we have here. At the top of the settings section you can see a toolbar with some buttons, which define what happens when you click or tap a cell. For quick access to these buttons you can pin the toolbar on the screen with this checkbox. By default, as you can see, the triangle button is selected. 
This places a triangle when you click with your left mouse button. This button lets you place a dot with your left mouse button. And this one will let you remove any mark you have made. The next setting is hide the timer. Some players are not competitive and the timer just makes them feel uncomfortable. Hide it so you can relax while solving the puzzle. The next setting is night mode. If you are playing in the dark and the black on white is too bright for you, this setting will change the colors to relieve your eyes. A good night sleep is always recommended though. Highlight last change will show a blue outline on the cell you have changed in your last move. Auto mark the sides of completed numbers. This setting will automatically add dots on the sides of numbers, which are already completed. Gray out completed numbers will change the color of numbers, which are completed. Highlight wrong numbers will make a number red if it has more triangles than required. Use gray color for triangles. Try out this option. Having the triangles in a different color may be your thing. The input mode defines the way you place triangles. By default the triangle is defined by which corner of the cell you click. Prioritize possible orientations will make it much harder to place a triangle if that is an impossible move. Rotate on click will rotate the triangle orientation on every click. This option will also enable an additional button in the toolbar. That button will let you place a dot as a part of the rotation. Rotate only possible orientations will let you place only possible moves. Show an input pad will display a pad with all the options for the cell that you click. You may prefer this option if you are playing on a mobile device. Part 6. Playing with your keyboard. If you are not a mouse person, or the constant clicking annoys you, or your coworkers, you can use your keyboard to play. First click inside the puzzle just to make sure it has the focus. Then you can navigate through the puzzle using your arrow keys. You should see a blue outline on the cell that is currently focused. You can also move around using the numpad or the A, S, D and W keys. You can place a triangle using the Q, E, C and Z keys. Or the 7, 9, 3 and 1 keys on your numpad. Place a dot using the X key or the 5 key on your numpad. Use Ctrl plus Z to undo a move, and Ctrl plus Y to redo it. Part 7. Playing on a mobile device. I am going to load the site on iPhone SE, which has a pretty small screen. Obviously the bigger the screen the better. Let's see how to adjust the zoom of the puzzle. On mobile devices you have two options for zooming. First you have the zoom button and the slider. And second you can pinch with two fingers to zoom in and out the entire page. If the puzzle is too large for the screen you can scroll it left and right to reach any part of the puzzle. Another approach is to zoom out the puzzle until it fits the screen. Then you can zoom in the entire page until the puzzle is big enough. This approach also allows you to scroll diagonally. By default on mobile devices tapping a cell will rotate a triangle in all possible orientations. Tap a cell to place a triangle. Tap again to rotate it. Tap until a dot is shown if this is what you need. You can also try the input pad and see if that makes it easier for you. You can now solve puzzles like a pro.